In this video, I want to talk about associative arrays, a really interesting data structure that you find in many modern day programming languages. Now to do that, first we need to cover normal arrays, then associative arrays, and then we're going to look at some demos in Python. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So first of all, what is an array? What's a normal array? Well, at its lowest level, an array is a block of memory where you can access each location using an index. The first location is at index zero in many programming languages. The next one is at index one, then at index two, and so on. Now, strings in languages like C are in fact just an array. So if you want to put the word Gary in there, you'd put a G in index zero, an A in index one, an R in index two, a Y in index three, and then a zero in index four. Now it's that extra zero, the fact that it's now five long, that causes a lot of these memory issues. And in fact, I have a whole video about that here on this channel. So really an array is just a way of saying, I want to access this location by using this index. Now associative array takes that same idea that you have some data at an index, but it goes one step further. Okay, so let's move on to associative arrays. So here is a traditional array, 350, 50, 90, at index 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, and so on. Now, w if we were to access that array in a language like C, then you just say A array, square brackets 2 gives you 90. Okay, but what's interesting is these are actually the lifespans of different types of trees. Now, I'm not a tree expert. I'm not an arborist. So I'm sorry if I got any of these wrong. I just did a quick look up of them. But it would be much more interesting if I knew which trees they referred to. So in fact, uh, 350 years is for an ash, 90 years for a lemon, and so on. In fact, it'd be even better if I put it this way around. So ash is 350 years, aspen is 50 years, and so on. Now this is an associative array. Rather than it being index 0, 1, 2, and 3, and so on, the index is a string. So I can use the string as a way of giving me information about the data that's in the value part. It becomes a key value pair. So indexes don't need to be sequential and not just integers, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now it can be aspen, lemon, oak, whatever it is I wanted to put in there. And even if I was using numbers, zero, one, two, three as strings, I could put them uh, at you know, any order I like because they don't need to be a sequential. I could have zero, 100, 397, you know, and so on. Whatever it is that I'm wanting to do. Associative arrays store data in that key value pair, as I said, which allows for very efficient data retrieval. And unlike static arrays, associative arrays do not have a fixed size. They can dynamically grow and shrink as elements are added or removed. And this is to do with the way they're implemented, and we'll talk more about the implementation in a minute. Of course, in a language like C, you can grow an array by reallocating the memory and then copying it and so on. But in the languages where these are implemented, that's all handled by the underlying implementation. And just like a normal array, you can retrieve an element, read an element, change an element, add a new element, remove an element, or delete all the elements from an array. Now, many programming languages provide built-in support for associative arrays often with specific syntax and optimized implementations. There are dictionaries in Python, JavaScript has objects and maps, Java has hash maps and, and so on. Now we're gonna be using Python for the rest of this video. Now I wanna talk very quickly about JSON because JSON is also a key value uh, data structure uh, and it maps very well to associative arrays and it will help in some of our demonstrations we're gonna do in a minute. So. Uh, JSON is the JavaScript object notation. It's a lightweight data interchange format that is easy for humans to read and write and yet easy for machines to parse and generate basically a text file or a string or something sent over the internet that is in this particular format. JSON represents data as key value pairs with keys as strings and values can be strings, numbers, booleans, uh, and so on. JSON is widely used for transmitting data in web applications such as between a client and a server. It's also used a lot for configuration files. It's easy to integrate with JavaScript, as you expect, because it's the JavaScript object notation. Also very easy for languages like Python. And as I said, it maps very well to associative arrays. So here is an example of some JSON. You can see here the key is in quotes because it's a string. Then you have colon, and then you have the value. In this case, it's an integer, no quotes around it, a comma at the end, all the way through, no comma on the last one because you're about to close the object. 
another example for a high score table in a Space Invaders game or something, you know, the name of the player and then their score. And you can also make it more complicated. We could have employees, which then has inside of it, notice another curly bracket, another set of uh, key value pairs. So name, Gary, badge ID, and so on. And in fact, you can make that even more complicated. We could have employees and then a list of those and then contractors and a list of those. Now, one thing to note is when you're using a system where you've got one object inside of another one, then you can't just use that uh, give me the name thing anymore because which name do you want? That one, that one, or that one? So you have to go through it in, uh, in an iterative fashion in, with a loop and we'll, we'll look at that uh, in a moment. So if you do use JSON like this, it's not as efficient as just using it like we did a moment ago with Aspen, Oak, Lemon, whatever. Uh, so it's a different way of using it, but equally can be mapped into an associative array. Okay, so let's look at some Python, uh, some examples of how you use associative arrays and we're gonna do that interactively. Okay, so here is a very simple bit of Python. Trees is equal to curly brackets, and then you can see the key and the value there. And then we're just gonna say print trees. So if you run this, it does work exactly as you'd think. There is this associative array with the keys and the values. Now, if I actually wanted to print out the specific value of, let's say, Aspen, you do that by saying trees, which is the name of the array, square bracket, and then in quotes, the key value. So if we run that, you can see now that it says 50, which is exactly right. That is the value of Aspen. You can do other things. For example, you can get the length of the array. So if you do len and then trees, one, two, three, four, then we'll get four from there as you can see. And you can also add new ones. So here we've got our initial uh, setup. If I now say trees oak, that's a new key value, 150, then it'll add that to the associative array. And if I print that out, now you can see oak has been added here at the end. Values can also be removed using the pop uh, method. So trees.pop ash will remove ash from our list. So if we run that, we can see the list changes now because ash has been removed. Now, as I said, we can use this with JSON. So here is some JSON that I've defined in a string. I'm using the triple uh, quote marks here to enable me to make this a multiple line string. And also it's got uh, quote marks inside of it. But this is the example I gave uh, earlier on. So it's uh, three sets of employees, one contractor. And then what you can do inside of Python is you can say json.loads and then j there is our string. Of course, you could read this from a file. I'm just using a string because it's really quick here. Notice we're doing import JSON here at the top. And then all I can do is I can say print EMP, which is uh, employees, that will print out this array. And then if I wanted to print out the first one, notice I'm using an index now. As I said earlier on, you have to go through this with some kind of loop. So zero is this, this object here. So if we print out the name of uh, the zero one, the first one, then I'm gonna get Gary. So let's run that. So there you can see is the whole uh, array printed out there and then uh, Gary, as we said. Now, here's another example, same JSON data, but this time what I want to do is I want to go through the loop. So I say 4E in employees. So notice that's the sub object. Okay. And then I say, if the badge ID is equal to that, then print out the name. So this is how I do a search, but notice this is uh, going through, you know, uh, in a linear fashion. So that's the disadvantage of designing the JSON like this is that you're now having to go through them uh, in a loop. You can't just say, give me oak or aspen as we could when it was just a simple uh, key value pair. So if we do that, Bob, let's just go and have a look. Yep, Bob has that key. Now it's worth mentioning you can't have duplicates with the key value system because the key has to be unique. So duplicates are not allowed. Dictionaries cannot have two items with the same key and duplicate values will overwrite existing values. And so for example here, a bit of JSON, if I have uh, Aspen and then I have already have Aspen, what, it's gonna overwrite the existing one. So let's just look at that example with duplicates now. You can see Aspen is here and here. And if we run it, we'll get 51. There you go, uh, as I said. Okay, just a quick thing about the implementation. The most frequent uh, implementation of associative arrays is a hash table. Another common approach is to implement them using self-balancing binary trees, such as AVL trees. And I do have a video about that here on this channel. Create your own database from the ground up, a two-part video. The first one is about balanced 
binary trees, how you do all that, implement that all in C. So the question is, would you like another video instead on hash tables? Because I've covered AVL trees. Would you like one on hash tables? Please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so there you have it, associative arrays. We looked at how you use them in Python. Love to know your thoughts on this data structure in the comments below. I use them quite a lot, uh, particularly in Python, as I said, because it's great for things like, uh, you know, JSON, but not only JSON, you can actually, you know, put HTML or XML, other things into associative arrays. Very, very useful data structure. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, do let me know, are there other programming videos that you would like to see? Drop a hint for me in the comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.